Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Erica Angel. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I missed you. Today, I have a very sad and horrific story for you guys. And the story that I'm going to be talking about today is about Travis the Chimpanzee. Esta historia, la verdad, es de esas historias que nunca, nunca se te olvidan. Because of how shocking it is. And meanwhile, I tell you guys the story. I'm going to be doing my makeup, of course. So if you're going to get ready, let's get ready together. If not, grab your snacks or whatever you need. But get ready for this story because it's, it's a shocking one. So this story takes place in Stamford, Connecticut. There was a lady by the name of Sandra. Sandra had a husband and his name was Jerry. And Sandra also had a daughter from her previous marriage. Pero la cuidaban como si fuera su hija. Su esposo Jerry era un businessman who had multiple businesses. And when the time came of Sandra's daughter to move out and get married, Sandra se aguitó muchísimo and she felt very lonely. That's when she got the idea to get a pet, but just not any pet. Sandra wanted a chimpanzee. Agarró el contacto de un breeder and she ended up buying a baby chimpanzee for $50,000. Sí, ya sé que está culero to buy wild animals as pets and that easy, pero así pasó. And it's super sad que al changuito lo separaron de su mamá. All the changuito ever knew was that Sandra was his mom and I actually heard that they ended up killing his mom, I think two years after they sold the chimpanzee, which is even more fucked up, but a este chimpanzee le pusieron Travis. The reason why they named him Travis, it was because they named him after their favorite singer, who was Travis Tritt. By the way guys, my big beauty blender is from Lorella Cosmetics and my discount code is Erica. Siempre me preguntan que de donde es because it's so huge. And the application is so nice. I'm so obsessed with this beauty blender. Tengo otras pero no salgo de esta. <laughs> so then they had Travis as their pet chimpanzee and they were so in love with him. Like, haz de cuenta yo con Goofy. Era el bebé de la casa. Inside Sandra's home, there was even trees, ropes, and swings para que Travis se sienta como si estuviera en su natural habitat. They literally made changes in their home to make things easier for Travis. Travis got so smart to a point where they would let him drive the car. ¿Quién chingados hace eso? Yo no sé. Like the fact that a chimpanzee is able to drive, y yo ni siquiera sé. That's insane to me. He would drive, he would ride his tricycle. Él abría el refrigerador y agarraba lo que él quería. He would brush his teeth. He would even drink wine. Dude, he was living the life. Lo tenían bien chiqueado. Así, haz de cuenta un niño. Dicen que hasta se memorizó. He memorized the time that the ice cream man would come. So he can go outside and get his ice cream. Isn't that insane? If I were the ice cream man, I would be shitting bricks. I would be fucking scared. Like, just imagine passing by a house y que esté un pinche chango ahí esperando su helado. I would be like, en la madre, ya no voy a pasar por ahí. Travis ended up getting so smart to a point where he even worked as an actor. Yes, dude, se lanzó de actor. He came out in a commercial for Pepsi and for Old Navy. And he also came out in other TV shows. Y mucha gente que vivía ahí cerca de él le pedían fotos. He was a local celebrity. That's what people described him as. 
Y pues imagínate Sandra, ya me la imagino bien orgullosa, bien mamaluchona. She was super proud to be Travis's mom. Sandra was probably like, mi hijo ya la hizo. All right, guys, so for my eyeshadow, I'm going to be using this palette by EXO Cosmetics. Me voy a hacer algo super sencillo. And then a day came where Sandra's daughter got in a car accident. And unfortunately, she lost her life. Sandra se aguitó muchísimo. And Sandra had a best friend named Charla. Charla and Sandra had met at a horse auction. Since she was sad, she told Charla that she should move to Connecticut with her daughter. She was like, yeah, come here, we can be closer. And I mean, they were best friends, pero eran, as de cuenta, long distance best friends. So it could just be so much better if Charla lived close to her, they can hang out more. Y aparte, le ofrecieron a Charla un trabajo because Sandra's husband was a businessman. They owned a towing company. Así que Charla ended up getting convinced y se fue para Connecticut. I'm adding this nude white shade in my lid. Due to the fact that Charla se dejó convencer, I feel like that says so much about her. She was such a good friend. Llegó a Connecticut y empezó a trabajar and hanging out more with Sandra. She was already aware of Sandra having a pet chimpanzee, which is Travis. <coughs> Goofy. No, papi. Ay, déjame luz. Charla was already aware of her best friend having Travis as a pet. Ella conocía a Travis desde que Travis was a baby drinking from a baby bottle. And even if she knew Travis, Charla dice que le daba nervios. She would be a little scared of him, pero Sandra no más se reía. She mentioned a time where Travis went up to Charla and started pulling her hair. Dur se la desgreñó. To a point where Travis pulled out a chunk of her hair. Y Sandra no más estaba riendo. Así tipo esas personas que dicen, no pasa nada, no pasa nada. Y al final, sí pasa. Y se quedan como pendejos. Well, this, this is one of those times. So she didn't really feel comfortable having Travis around. But she just put it to the side. She didn't want that to get in between their friendship. Porque ella quería mucho a Sandra. And I think it's crazy that cuando Travis empezó a crecer, he ended up weighing 200 pounds. Like, dude, he was big. I've seen some pictures of Travis. Y se me figura como tipo un señor. Oh, y también, él se cambiaba solo, se ponía la ropa sola. Hay una foto donde tiene una camisa amarilla. And dude, he was thick. He was big. So just imagine your best friend having a big chimpanzee as a pet and going over her house. Acting as if you're not scared y tener que soportar eso. Dude, I would be fucking scared. Porque se oye cute y toda la cosa, but those animals are unpredictable. No, 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 careful, 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 careful. Mira. And this is when the first incident happened. On October of 2003, Sandra was driving around with Travis in the passenger seat. When they were driving, a driver threw them a bottle. Travis se emputó, he got so pissed, que se salió por la ventana, and he went after the driver. It's like tipo he had road rage. I mean, I know that road rage is just when you're driving, but Travis wouldn't stop 
going after the person who threw the bottle. Y él estaba corriendo alrededor de todos los carros. And this went on for hours. Sandra couldn't get Travis to come back inside of the car. She even showed Travis that she had snacks. Porque dicen que cuando se distraía mucho y se ponía así. If they would show him the snacks, he would calm down. Pues así le hacían, hoping that Travis would come y que hiciera caso. Y creo que nomás fue a tragarse los snacks. Then he went back to look for the man that threw the bottle. They ended up calling the police. The police was there for hours. Travis was going after the police officers now. Estaba bien salvaje. Y hasta que se empezó a cansar y a correr más despacio, they ended up injecting him para que se durmiera un ratito. Y pues así nomás lo calmaron. After he made that big scene. After that incident, Sandra and Jerry decided to not take Travis out anymore. Porque tipo que nomás los dejaba en ridículo. Animal Control got in contact with Sandra and they told her that she should be careful because chimpanzees can be very aggressive y tienen la fuerza de cinco hombres fuertes. Pero a Sandra le valió madre because that was her baby. Aparte de eso, también escuché que pusieron una law ahí en donde vivía. Something about having a wild animal as a pet. Por lo que pasó... But for some reason, Sandra ignored it. I'm going to contour my face with this brown shade. Después pasó el tiempo and on April of 2005, Sandra's husband, Jerry, passed away from cancer. Sandra was devastated. And not only Sandra, but Travis as well. Contó Sandra that Travis would wait in the door for hours, waiting for Jerry to come home. And Travis looked super sad because his dad wouldn't come home. Aparte de eso, Travis was also sad because they wouldn't take him out as much anymore. I'm going to take a little bit of black. And I'm going to connect it with my wing. Y aquí abajito me voy a poner poquito. At this point, when Sandra lost her husband, she was 70. And all she had was Travis, who was 14 years old, and her best friend, Charla, who was 55. Me estoy poniendo delineador aquí en mi inner corner. Hasta que llegó el día 16 de febrero of 2009. Sandra estaba en su casa con Travis y de la nada Travis got her car keys y se quería salir con ellas. Sandra didn't know what to do porque Travis no regresaba. So she decided to call her best friend Charla for help. When Charla got there, she was trying to lure Travis to go back inside with his favorite toy, which was a Tickle Me Elmo. Travis saw that Charla had his favorite toy and things got horrible. He attacked her and it was bad. Sandra was trying to get Travis to stop attacking Charla. Pero este Travis no hacía caso. So she ended up calling the police and I'm going to leave the phone call here. Stand for 911. Where's your emergency? Oh, this is here. 241 Rock. Rock Crimson Road. What's Send the problem? The police. Send the police. What's the problem there? The, the chip killed my, my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your with friend? I need to know. With a gun. With a gun. Okay. Sorry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you put yourself away? I don't want the monkey attacking you. Please, hurry up. Listen to me. Uh, they're on the way, ma'am. They got to shoot him, please. 
Please, hurry, hurry! Are you there with your friend? I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't. He tried to attack me now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, Please. okay? They're already on the way. Please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we could try I to help can't. your friend. No. No, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. Is the monkey still by your friend, or can you get yeah, close to your he, friend? He in her. He's he's eating eating her. her. <laughs> please. God, no, oh, please. Okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. <laughs> they tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him, and he's not, and it made him worse. Okay, please. Senator. Have them shoot him. They will, sir. Shoot him! Shoot him! Sandra, stay in your car. Shoot him! Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Shoot him, please. I tried stabbing him, and, and he's hurt now, too. So so he's going to attack anybody. I can't get out of this car. Lock your doors on your car and stay it, there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors right Sandra, open. just do what I'm please. telling you to. Stay in the car. Please the police officers will handle it. They did, Sandra. They're shooting at him already, okay? But he's not dead. I know. They will continue until he's dead, okay? I just need you to stay on the phone with me and breathe. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, God. Oh, God. It just sounds crazy. Like, se escucha la desesperación en su voz. And, dude, it sucks. I mean... This situation could have been prevented in so many ways, 100%. Pero pues, in that moment, Sandra was doing her best. She felt so helpless. Y Travis no reaccionaba. It was so bad that even Sandra decided to stab Travis in the back. And she says that that felt like she was stabbing herself. Dice también que Travis la volteó a ver, like, Mom, what did you just do? And thinking about that, it honestly breaks my heart because I would hate to be in that situation. Pero también a la vez, it's like ella también, you know, like, why does she have a pet chimpanzee? I want you guys to know that I feel like Charla was 100% the victim here no questions asked like lo que le pasó horrible sandra also said that when she stabbed travis other than him looking at her he started biting off her face even more como que le dio coraje y no sabía cómo sentirse entonces se desquitó con charla it's just dude it's super sad he was eating charla's face and the cops ended up shooting Travis. Sandra had already stabbed him. Y con todo eso que le habían hecho, Travis still had so much energy to continue attacking Charla. Y ya después, they found Travis next to his cage full of blood. Se murió por pérdida de sangre. Because of all the stabbing y los balazos que le dieron. And Charla was still alive. They say that her nose was hanging by a thread. And a lot of people thought, oh, she is for sure dead because there is no way she can survive that. Como toda su cara estaba destrozada and it turns out that she was alive. Guys, even the people, the paramedics, the cops, the people from the hospital, Everyone involved in this case, they had to go to therapy porque quedaron traumados mirando la cara de Charla y everything that happened. It was it was just that traumatizing and shocking. Had ripped off her nose, which was just hanging on by a thread. We found extensive dirt, chimpanzee hair, and several chimpanzee teeth implanted in the bone. Charla, she basically, she didn't have a face. As crazy as it sounds, dude, pobrecita. They actually interviewed her in Oprah. Y les voy a poner una parte aquí. Mm -hmm. Would you mind lifting the veil? Oh, my Lord. So, so we can the see. The hat comes off. Yep. Okay, okay.
You know, it was it was the most horrible thing that could have ever happened. And nobody would know unless they were in my place. And, and many, many people know the love that I had for Travis and Travis had for me. For me to do something like that, put a knife in him, was like putting one in myself. And then he turned around and like, Mom, what did you do? So nobody could know what I went through then and what I'm going through now. He's not in bed with me. He slept with me every night. He would comb my hair. He would, and it's, it's just, it's a tragedy on both parts for my friend and for him and me. Después de eso, shortly after, Sandra ended up passing away from a brain aneurysm. A lot of people say she died because of heartbreak, because she lost her daughter, her husband, her pet Travis, y perdió la amistad con su amiga Charla. Y aparte de eso, estrés, porque dicen que Charla's family ended up suing Sandra for millions of dollars. Y al final llegaron a un acuerdo de cuatro millones de dólares. Shortly after that, that's when Sandra passed away. And they were mainly suing her because of all the medical bills. Dude, era un putero de cosas that Charla had to go through and still has to go through. Years later, Charla ended up getting a face transplant. Oh my God, dude, I am so happy for her. I feel like it looks pretty good, especially compared to how it looked before. She even has glass eyes now. También no tiene manos and she tried to get hands as well, but they got infected, así que decidieron dejarla sin manos. She's so strong because her life took a drastic change. And to be honest, I think she's doing amazing. And she is so beautiful from the inside and out. Mire que la entrevistaron otra vez. Y su vibra se nota como si está más animada. She is also always working on getting better and spreading awareness on wild animals and how you shouldn't have them as pets. Guys, and I saw a part of an interview that stuck with me and made me so happy and I thought that part was so beautiful where she goes to the thrift store con la señora que la está entrevistando and she's feeling a necklace of a star. It has a little charm of a star and she ends up buying it for the reportera. Like, ugh, dude, that part, like it just made me, it just made my heart so happy to see how giving she is despite of everything that she has gone through. I'll try this one. And so is her generosity. <laughs> I bought the star for you. You bought the star for me? You're a nice star today. Oh, Charlie, you're my star. Hi, thank you. I know that um, Charlie is watching. Thank you for my star. I told you I'd wear it, I did. Ella sigue echándole ganas, and she only wants to get better. Fiercely independent, Charla now lives on her own. I go this way. Charla also said that now she is ready to start riding horses again, and hearing that made me so happy for her. All of those? Yeah, yeah. and I'm ready. I want to ride horses again. Do you think you will? What I think about the story overall, I feel for all of them. I feel like this was such an unfortunate situation. Sandra, like I said, I feel like this could have been prevented, especially si ya había visto cómo se estaba portando Travis. Travis, yo siento que al final del día, he's a wild animal. Y la verdad, no tiene la culpa porque él no debería de estar viviendo como un humano. Chimpanzees have so much energy and they tend to be very aggressive. So the fact that he was living in a home acting like a human is crazy. Charla, like I said, I feel like she was definitely the victim and my heart breaks for her. Porque pobrecita, todo ese trauma que pasó, the fact that she lost her eyesight and the last thing she ever saw was Travis attacking her, I know, dude, I can only imagine how traumatizing that is.
And now some things about the story that people mentioned that it could be reasons why Travis attacked Charla. Una de ellas es que Travis was on Xanax. Y dicen que le daban eso para que se calme. Pero again, es una naturaleza de actuar salvaje. Y sí, entiendo que estaba encariñada, but... Ugh, dude, that's such a hard situation. That's why I say that I feel for all of them, but that's not right at the end of the day. Yo creo lo quería tener de a huevo y por eso le dio esa madre también. She was like, I get to keep him and va a estar más calmadito. Which, to be honest, it's pretty dumb because that makes people trip out a lot. Never, yeah. never, never. And, and it was a friend that was he here. He forgot it. And it wasn't a prescription. It wasn't anything. He's never had anything. También otra razón por la que piensan que Travis attacked Charla. It's because they see that Charla had a different hairstyle or hair color that day. And Travis didn't recognize her. So he just saw a stranger holding his favorite toy. Y por eso reaccionó así. No sé, pero esas son unas razones or conspiracies that people have created this story overall just breaks my heart comment below what you guys think do you think that this situation could have been prevented because i definitely think so and yeah guys this is it for today's video if you liked it give me a thumbs up down below don't forget to like share comment and subscribe turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time i post and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.